Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on a River Rossi Big Boy I picked up off of eBay. This is a locomotive which I found around a year ago. I was browsing eBay and I found this locomotive. It was up for auction. And then at the same time, another locomotive appeared for sale at a very good price. So I decided not to place any more bids, thinking that this one would just run out. Somebody would outbid me. But lo and behold, I actually ended up being the winner of this locomotive as well. So that was over a year ago, and uh, I haven't unboxed it because I've just been working on the other one, but I figured we'll get this one out of the box, we'll work on it, and uh, since I already have uh, a couple of them, I think I'm going to give this one away as part of a charitable promotion. So let's get this thing out of the box and see what we're dealing with, and then see if we can fix it, because apparently it doesn't run. So here's the first uh, item. This is just kind of a miscellaneous 040 which comes with it for some reason. I don't really know why that was included in the lot, but uh, it does add to the value. There is the tender. And there is the locomotive itself. And uh, right off the bat, it looks to be in pretty good condition. We've uh, got uh, all the uh, handrails here. Boiler caps not missing, which is a very common problem. We are uh, missing one of the uh, running plates in the bell, so uh, that's something that we'll uh, try to look for. But uh, other than that, it looks to be uh, pretty well intact. So now why don't we uh, take this locomotive, the tender, and the other locomotive over to my layout and we'll test it out. We'll try to figure out what's going on with it and then we'll uh, go from there. So we'll see what exactly is going on with these different pieces of equipment. One thing I've already identified is that the tender seems to have a bit of a weight distribution problem. Even if uh, I kind of shake it up, it's, uh, it's almost like a trick piece. It just keeps falling over. So I don't quite know what the deal with that is, but we'll have to fix that at some point. But uh, first we'll test the little uh, freebie 040 here. I don't really have high expectations for it, but we'll give it some power. And, well, that's kind of promising. So that seems to be all right, but let's get on to what we're all really here for, and that is, of course, the big boy. So it does look to be uh, sitting quite nicely on the track there. We'll get the tender all hooked up here. Hmm, it doesn't seem like this tender is even compatible. Now I know that wasn't the original tender, but usually these River Rossies are cross compatible. Apparently not that one. Luckily I've already got another River Rossi big boy tender here, so we'll just use that for now. And uh, see if this thing actually runs or not. Giving it some power here. Um, I'm not seeing any short circuits but nothing's happening. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's for a second there, it did something. I wonder when the last time this thing was run, you know, it could, could have been sitting for 20, 25 years. And I think that's what's going on in this case. I think we have a locomotive, which has been sitting for a very long time. We've got a lot of dirty contacts because it is trying to go. It's just not getting power, but there's no short circuits or anything like that. So that's a great sign. So let's take this thing uh, back over to the workbench and see if we can sort it out. So what we just saw right there is very promising. This thing is showing some signs of life. It just doesn't seem to be picking up power. And uh, I already have a feeling as to why that is. You can see these wheels are quite uh, dirty. There's a lot of carbon, oils, and oxidization. So that could be causing some issues. Uh, but fundamentally, this thing probably needs to be serviced anyway. So we'll disassemble it a bit and at least throw some fresh oil in it, clean up what we can. Uh, one thing that is interesting, though, is there is some sort of a service sticker. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a date or anything like that, because that actually would be helpful. But uh, in any case, we'll take it apart and see what we can do here. Usually, when these things sit for a while, you know, it's just a bit of oxidization and oils start to dry out. Those sorts of things happen to these locomotives, and they just kind of seize up. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can change that. Now, I'm not super familiar with these River Rossi big boys, but I believe we have to remove the cap in order to get to uh, this screw right here. I think it's responsible for holding the shell on, so we'll uh, remove that. And then there's another screw down here we have to remove. Uh, 
I wonder if this is holding it on. I can just about guarantee you there's somebody right now screaming through their screen trying to <laughs> tell me where the uh, hidden screw up front is, if there is one. Uh, but River Rossi tends to be uh, kind of clever with how they hid their screws. Sometimes they hid them in details and things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this is crucial. Maybe it's just for this detail, but no, just looking at this, it's an important one. So I bet we can take that off now. And just like so, we are inside. And uh, overall, this looks okay. I don't really know what's going on here, though. Somebody's definitely been inside here before, and they added some sort of an epoxy. That's undoubtedly not something they would have done at the factory. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the good news is that the drive seems to be turning, so it's not seized. Um, the wires don't look to be in too poor of a condition. Everything looks to be pretty good. Um, I'm always kind of wary of things like this. So I might wanna check in on that, but uh, otherwise this is looking pretty good. So I think we'll uh, check in on the motor here. I don't know if we can open this style of motor up, but uh, we should at least try to see if we can service the commutator on this locomotive. So trying to remove the motor seems to be a little bit more complicated than I thought. You probably could uh, get a screwdriver in here somehow, but it's just an awkward angle. The good news is that the commutator is actually exposed, so I can see that uh, the top of it's actually pretty clean. What I really want to do though is just uh, try to get in the gaps on the commutator and just clean out any uh, carbon deposits, because uh, if uh, carbon gets in between the gaps on the commutator, it can cause a lot of problems. So uh, other than that, I'm not too concerned about this. Now we'll just quickly see if we apply power directly to the motor, if it will perform any different than it did on the track. I suspect it's going to start up pretty easily, but you never know. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, that to me looks very good. It doesn't seem to be hesitating, so we know that the motor is working fine. Um, it does sound a tiny bit strange though, and that could be due to old lubricants. So we'll open up uh, these components right here, and we'll just check in on them, just make sure that there's uh, no dried oil in there, and we'll add some fresh stuff, and uh, that should uh, do this all some good. When you're working with a locomotive with uh, so many moving parts too, it is important to make sure everything is well lubricated. The motors on these things are kind of small for the size of drive. They're not bad motors, but um, it would have been preferable probably to, to put something a little bit larger in these big boy locomotives. Okay, so there's not really uh, any oil in this drive anymore, so we'll uh, take that one apart and probably uh, clean it, and uh, we'll do the same with the other one. Hmm. Feels like that screw is uh, slightly threaded into the plastic. Yeah, it looks okay. These are far from the worst I've seen, but we'll just uh, throw them in a little bit of soapy water here, just get them all cleaned up. You could also use rubbing alcohol in a case like this, because again, these gears are really not that bad. All right, with the parts all cleaned and dried, I think we can start reassembling everything. We'll uh, just uh, start with the uh, little gearbox here. Yeah, I'll just get a little bit of oil and grease on there. Grease is uh, very important when you're working with metal parts just because uh, they tend to create a little bit more friction. So if they don't have any uh, thick lubricant, they will uh, wear down very quickly. It's always my suggestion, throw a little bit of grease on these metal worm gears. One thing I should point out is that you have to have this part uh, straight with the uh, piece in there. It's kind of hard to see, but if you need to get them into alignment, just uh, turn that part to adjust it.
All right, so we know that uh, I've done it right because the wheels are all turning. So that's all good. I think at this point now what we'll focus on is uh, servicing the wheels. So we'll open uh, this whole section up here. We'll see if we can just uh, throw some fresh oil on here. We'll uh, clean up the wheels themselves and uh, then we'll just try to run the thing. And I think it just kind of needs to break in a little bit with the uh, fresh oil. All right, so that overall uh, looks very good. So we'll throw some uh, fresh oil on uh, all the bearings here. Really nice when you uh, open something like this up and it's all clean. Oftentimes, it's really just about checking in on things. You know, there's not always something wrong with everything you open up, but you just want to make sure that everything's in order because, you know, there are the times where things look okay from the outside and then you open it up and it's full of old dust and hair and stuff like that. And that will destroy a motor very quickly. Nope, no signs of any dust or hair in this one either. Just needs a little bit of oil. Now what we're gonna try to do is actually power this thing up and use the rotation of the wheels to uh, help clean them. I guess before that though, we'll just uh, throw a little bit of oil on all the moving parts here. It's always important, as I said earlier, with these larger steam engines, just to make sure everything has a little bit of oil. Just a few minutes of work and you can see just how much better the bottom row looks in comparison to the top. Just look at all that carbon and then just look how shiny these are. All right, so I think those wheels are about as good as we're gonna get them. So why don't we take the drive over to the track and just test it all out before we go putting the shell back on. It's not something that I always do, but uh, working with a drive this complicated, I just wanna be sure that uh, everything's in order. So let's go test it out. And nothing so far. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, they're excellent. Okay, that's really weird. You can see that the headlight's getting power, but the motor isn't. So I don't know if that's a problem with the brushes or what the case is, but uh, something's definitely a little bit off with it. I don't know, let's bring it back over to the workbench. So that certainly was not the worst result that could have happened. You know, the engine was definitely running a lot better than it was than when we first tested it out, but uh, I'm still not thrilled with that. Something is definitely off with the electrical system. It could be the brushes are not making proper contact because again, as we saw, the locomotive wasn't moving, but the light was on. So we know there is power getting into the drive. So I don't know if maybe there are two separate pickup systems with each truck and something's not quite right there. Uh, Cause that's very strange. Usually the light reflects exactly what the motor is getting. So I'll have to have a look over this thing. As I said earlier, I am a little bit suspicious about this piece right here. So I don't know if maybe we should just try to get this off and have a look. The wire feels solid though, so that doesn't seem to be the problem. I do find it a little bit weird that uh, both of these are not linked together. Maybe it's because uh, it goes through the frame. But the motor is also supposed to pick up power through the frame and there's a wire soldered to it, so I don't know if that's just uh, kind of a redundancy. Oh, <laughs> 
So uh, that could be part of our problem. We got a wire and it goes nowhere. The question is now, what is it supposed to head to? Oh, I see it. There is uh, a little bit of solder right there. And there's no connection. So at some point this wire must have wiggled its way off. So I think the locomotive at this point is only collecting power from uh, one truck. So that's not so good. So we'll fix that up and hopefully it will uh, solve some of these motor issues. All right, so with uh, that all soldered up, why don't we take this thing back over to the bench and see if that made any difference. All right, that seems promising so far. All right, so that's very good. It does not seem to be stuttering as much. So I think that that was what was going on. That one little wire was causing all that trouble. Now the one thing that does concern me a little bit is how much amperage it's pulling. It's a little bit high for uh, this style of motor, but uh, I've got a theory as to why it might be doing that. So we'll take it back over the bench and see if we can get that current draw down a little bit. So earlier when I was uh, reassembling this part of the drive, I noticed something, which is that uh, there are these two uh, washers here. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a little bit of wear on the plastic. So I think that these spacers might be touching that part of the plastic and adding strain to the drive. Yeah, look, those are making so much contact that they actually turn when I turn the drive. So that's, uh, that's not good. All right, let's go see if that made any difference. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it did, I'll be darned. So at this point, I'm quite happy with how the drive is performing. So I think all we have left to do is to put the shell on and then uh, just run it like crazy to really break it in. All right, well, I think we've got that pretty well back together. I think I'll just quickly take a brush over this thing and just kind of clean all the dust off it before we uh, go trying to test it out, though. Well, I think that that's looking a lot better. Let's take it over to the track and see if she'll run. I'm pretty optimistic that this thing is gonna run just because uh, the drive seemed to be doing pretty well before we put the shell on, but uh, you never know. Sometimes uh, just uh, moving things around to put the shell on can cause some funny stuff to happen. So we'll test it out. I'll put the tender on just for fun too. The uh, sway bar here is a little bit uh, misadjusted, but uh, we'll just let that ride. Anyways, let's give it some power. Yeah, look at that. That seems pretty good so far. Let's see if she can make an entire lap. Okay, so a bit of a derailment there, but that's okay.
So just for kicks, I went and got my other tender, which actually has a knuckle coupler. That way we could hook up this uh, little train right here. So I figure we'll take it for a spin and uh, let it pull some cars as it was meant to do. Let's see how this goes. And as you would imagine, for an engine of its size, it uh, pulls these cars with no issues. <laughs> Such a great train. What an excellent locomotive. So I think that's going to be about it for today's repair. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm certainly impressed with the results. I can't believe how well this engine runs. But just before we finish off the video, I just want to talk about something which I mentioned earlier. And that's the idea of giving this locomotive away as some sort of a charity raffle prize. So what I was thinking is maybe hosting a live stream where we do some fundraising and maybe for uh, donations over a certain amount, we'll figure out some sort of threshold. Everybody's names will be entered into a raffle and then uh, we'll give this locomotive away to someone because I think it's a really cool looking locomotive and uh, I'm sure it would make a terrific addition to someone's collection out there. And uh, why not do some good with it too and uh, raise some money for those in need out there. So yeah, let me know what you think. I don't have uh, one charity in mind necessarily. I was kind of thinking Toys for Tots, but I'm open to suggestions. So if you have any, put them in the comments. If we do a charity live stream, I'm probably going to need some help from the moderation team to write down all the names of people who donate, but uh, we'll see. Again, if you have any suggestions, please let me know about them. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.